Do you remember when Donald Trump stood on stage at the rally and said, Matt Gates and I have a little secret? We got to get the senators elected because we can take the Senate pretty easily. And I think with our little secret, we're going to do really well with the House, right? Our little secret is having a big impact. He and I have a secret. We'll tell you what it is when the race is over. Well, I think we now know what that secret was. The shock is intense. That is how one source describes to CNN the reaction from inside the Department of Justice now to the news that Donald Trump has tapped Matt Gates to be the next attorney general of the United States. Said another way, if tapped, he would take over the very department that investigated him in a year-long sex trafficking probe, one that ended with DOJ deciding to not pursue charges. Hmm. So there you go. The sex trafficking probe that the DOJ opened up on Matt Gates uh, turned out to go nowhere because they decided not to press charges, probably because, you know, there wasn't enough evidence if there were or really, that's not even true because the DOJ has gone after people and never had enough and not had any evidence. I mean, case in point. Donald Trump. So now every, and this is a common narrative that we're hearing. We're hearing there's no way Matt Gates can be the attorney general. Matt Gates can't lead the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice was investigating him for drugs and human trafficking and all this other stuff. Well, okay, but guess what? Joe Biden's White House was going after Donald Trump for a bevy of other things. Joe Biden's DOJ and FBI and, and every other organization was going after Donald Trump for a litany of things that never actually turned out to be uh, to hold any water. And now Donald Trump is taking that position. So if Donald Trump can take over as president a job where the current holder is investigating or has been investigating him. Why can't Matt Gates take over the DOJ, a job where the current leader has also been investigating him? It actually is the reason why Matt Gates should be in charge of the DOJ. It's actually the one reason why Matt Gates is the perfect choice to take over the Department of Justice because he's not a Washington bureaucrat. He's not somebody who's going to sit and rest on his laurels. He's going to say what he means and he's going to mean what he says. Like, for example, when he said this about women seeking abortions. Is it safe to say that based off of your comments, you're suggesting that these women at these abortion rallies are ugly and overweight? Yes. What do you say to people who think that those comments are offensive? Be offended. I mean, mm -hmm. that, <laughs> isn't that the guy you want? As your attorney general, isn't that the way you got? Isn't that the guy you want going after the deep state and the swamp creatures and the corruption? He, I think he said. Well, I forget the quote. He said the the women that are at abortion clinics, ironically, are the ones that don't look like they would ever need abortions. Something like they all look like big thumbs or something like that. And they asked him about it. He was very honest in his reply. Is it safe to say that based off of your comments, you're suggesting <laughs> that these women at these abortion rallies are ugly and overweight? Yes. What do you say to people who think that those comments are offensive? Be offended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, boo all you want. <laughs> that's the, that's Matt Gates. Here's, now, here's a clip, by the way, of Matt. This is great. This is very, very, this is one of my favorite clips because this is Matt Gate handing it to Merrick Garland. Merrick Garland is the current attorney general. Matt Gates is the future attorney general. Here they are squaring off at a hearing in Congress last year. You can clear it all up for us right now. Will the Department of Justice provide to the committee all documents, all correspondence between the department and Alvin Bragg's office and Fonnie Willis's office and Letitia James's office? The offices you're referring to are independent offices of state. I get of, that. I get that. State. The question is whether or not you will provide all of your documents and correspondence. That's the question. It's, I, I don't need a, a history lesson. Well, I'm going to say again, we do not control those offices. They make yeah, their the own decisions. The question is whether you communicate with them, not whether you control them. Do you communicate with them and will you provide those if communications? If you make a request, we'll refer it to our Office of Legislative but, Affairs. But see, here's the thing. You come in here and you lodge this attack that it's a conspiracy theory that there is coordinated lawfare against Trump. And then when we say, fine, just give us the documents, give us the correspondence, and then if it's a conspiracy theory, that will be evident. But when you say, well, we'll take your request, and then we'll, we'll sort of work it through the DOJ's accommodation process, then you're actually advancing the very dangerous conspiracy theory that you're concerned about. Boom! Look at that. Look at that. Oh, boo all you want! 
Look at that. Yeah, you know what? If you just gave us the information, we could put this whole conspiracy theory into garbage to rest. But if you hide and if you obfuscate and if you say, well, you need to put in a department of you need to put in a, a freedom of information request and we'll get to it. Then you're basically just for your throwing fuel on the fire. You're throwing fuel on the fire of the conspiracy theory theory. Right. And that's exactly what uh, and that's exactly what Matt Gates is trying to point out. And that's why the DOJ is so shocked. They're so shocked that Matt Gates could be leading them. He could be the attorney general and he could have the inside track on how to vet out and charge the uh, and, ex and basically uh, get rid of just annihilate the corruption, not just in the DOJ, not just in the FBI, but in the entire government. He could, as Kamala Harris would say, with a with a with a flip with a wave of his pen, with the signature of his pen, he could go after whoever he wants. And more importantly, whoever Donald Trump thinks should be brought to justice. And that's what they really fear. That's what they're really concerned about. They believe, they believe that Donald Trump is going to use Matt Gates to attack his <laughs> this is the irony to me. They believe that Donald Trump is going to use Matt Gates as a personal attack dog to go after his political enemies. Which is exactly what Joe Biden used Merrick Garland for. The Democrats are so mad. They're so mad because Donald Trump, they believe, is going to do what they've been doing for four years. And he's not supposed to do that. That's their thing. You can't weaponize the government like we did. That's our job. Not anymore. The voters said, no, thank you. This has gotten various different reaction on both sides of the aisle. Uh, John Fetterman, one of our favorite, <laughs> one of our favorite senators to quote, was stopped in the hallways yesterday and asked about it. And John Fetterman, I got to be honest with you, for a dodo with a stroke, this guy put this uh, this whole pick and appointment. I mean, he 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 eloquated. He was very eloquent in his um, in his description of what Donald Trump he thought was doing with the Matt Gates Attorney General pick. I mean, it's I would describe it as. God tier level trolling to just trigger a, a full on China syndrome uh, to own the libs in perpetuity. Uh I mean, how w that's exactly how I would describe it to anybody. It's God tier trolling, not just trolling. God tier. It's like God. If God were going to troll somebody, he would uh, he would do it exactly this way. If God wanted to troll the libs, he would appoint Matt Gates attorney general. Oh, but Donald Trump beat him to it. It's God tier trolling to own the libs. What was it he said? I mean, it's, I would describe it as God tier level trolling to just trigger a, a full on China syndrome uh, to own the libs in perpetuity. I mean to own the libs in perpetuity. That is the best description I've heard of the Matt Gates. And that's not the reason he did it. He didn't do it. Donald Trump did not choose Matt Gates because he's trolling the libs. It's just an added benefit. It's just the icing on the cake, if you will. Matt, Matt Gates was chosen because he is a an America first patriot who is a fighter. He doesn't care what anybody thinks about him. He doesn't need money. He doesn't, he's not in bed with the special interest groups. He was attacked. In fact, after he this is a little known fact, but after he through Kevin McCarthy out of the Congress, he became Congress's number one biggest enemy. And there were millions of dollars coming in from everywhere. Kevin McCarthy got all of his donors because he wasn't running anymore. And he raised money to try to primary Matt Gates in Florida's District 1. They raised millions and millions of dollars to try to get Matt Gates out of Congress over there on the panhandle. And when all was said and done and when it all shook out and when the votes were tallied in the primary, in the primary, Matt Gates came out with more votes, with more support, with more of a mandate than he ever had before. Unfortunately, now he's resigned from Congress because you can't be attorney general and a congressman at the same time. So even though the folks in District 1 loved Matt Gates and they wanted him to go back and do more of the same, he had to resign his position yesterday because he's going to be the attorney general of the United States. And that is... Um, that is some God tier trolling, as John Fetterman would say. God tier level trolling. I never thought I would find myself quoting John Fetterman as much as I do, but man, you know what? It is it, anything can happen in a Donald Trump administration. John Fetterman can become the sage of the Senate, and and, and Donald Trump can make what is a a brilliant pick, a perfect pick, 
a great pick for attorney general and also have the added benefit of owning the libs in perpetuity. I'm so excited for this next ex ex administration. I could spit, but that'd be gross because I'd, I'd probably step it in or something. Like that. Listen, first of all, thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for joining us. This is Mark K saves the Republic. And if you have not yet subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for. I don't know what you're waiting for, man. This is, it just gets better from here. We, like I said, President Trump hasn't even taken office yet. It just gets better from here. So please hit the subscribe button. Hit the, hit the ding-a-ling. Make sure you got the notification set because if you get the notification set, then guess what? They notify you every single time we go live. They notify you every single time we post more content. They notify you every time there's a new video, new podcast, new short, new whatever it is. Rumble, YouTube, iTunes podcasts. If you're listening on Spotify, I don't care where you are or what you're doing. Just make sure that you're telling the, click on whatever button it is that looks positive. Could be a thumb up, could be a check mark, could be a word that says follow. It could just say subscribe. Whatever it is, do that now because you are not going to want to miss a minute of our content for the next four years and probably even more. And we'll talk about that in uh, in just a little while. There's another, there's another whole side to this too because look, we know that CNN and the DOJ are going to be shocked. We know that John Fetterman is going to uh, is going to say that this is some top tier trolling or god tier trolling. Uh, but then there's also Republicans and Democrats who are not big fans of this pick. And keep in mind, this is a cabinet level position that requires Senate confirmation. And John Bolton, you may remember that guy. John Bolton was on CNN. And this is interesting. He was discussing another one of Donald Trump's picks because yesterday Donald Trump also announced that he has selected Tulsi Gabbard. He selected Tulsi Gabbard to be the uh, director of national intelligence. And that is a huge position. She's going to, she's going to, um, she's going to answer directly to Donald Trump. And a lot of folks were like, whoa, 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 what is happening? Tulsi Gabbard, she's a Democrat. No, she's not. She's actually a Republican now. Uh, she made the big announcement at a Donald Trump rally. Well, now not only is Tulsi Gabbard, former Congresswoman from Hawaii, former Democrat nominee or Democrat uh, running for president, it, not only is she a former presidential candidate who ran against Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, but now she's a Republican director of national intelligence for the Donald Trump administration. I'm telling you, if it, anything is possible in this administration, anything is possible in Donald Trump's America. And we congratulate her. It's a great pick. But John Bolton was on CNN blasting the Tulsi Gabbard pick. Then he heard about the Matt Gates pick and he had to say, wait a minute. The Tulsi Gabbard pick isn't even the worst pick anymore. Oh, I, I thought it was the worst cabinet level appointment in history uh, until they then heard about the Matt Gates appointment. Uh, really, uh, my reaction was that this is like the legend of Caligula, the Roman emperor, uh, who wanted to nominate his horse as a Roman consul. Uh, you had to be a Roman senator at the time to be a consul, and it was intended to show how demeaned and degraded the Roman Senate had become. So now we're going to see whether the American Senate can stand up and reject two people who are totally unqualified, uh, unfit uh, professionally, and, uh, and and really lacking in the in the immoral characteristics, the character that you need to hold these jobs. I think this vote should be a hundred to nothing against both of them. A hundred to nothing against both of them. That's look. If John Bolton hates you. You're probably doing something right. Oh, wait. There you go. If John Bolton hates you and thinks that you are morally inept or unqualified. By the way, what is the moral qualification for attorney general or director of national intelligence? Merrick Garland, Eric Holder, Bill Barr. What is the what as we go? And I'm not even talking about like on paper because on paper, there's no rule. There's no there's no morality clause in the attorney general's contract. What th what there is, is there is Senate confirmation. And I don't know about you, but Merrick Garland doesn't seem like the most moral individual in the world. Eric Holder, 1000 percent, was not the most moral person in the world. Even Bill Barr had his moments. But to sit here and say these two should be defeated 100 to one. 100 to 1 
Uh, again, I think is a feather in their cap because John Bolton's opinion is horrible on basically everything. Uh, interesting point, though, is that while a lot of Democrats, in fact, most Democrats hate the pick and can't believe it and their heads are exploding and they think Donald Trump is is God tiered trolling, as John Fetterman said, uh, there's actually a couple of Democrats who think it's a it's a decent pick. In fact, one of them, one of them is Jared Moskowitz from right here in Florida. He's Florida's 23rd or 4th district, I forget. It's one of the rich it's down by like it's like Boca Raton. So he's one of these like he's one of these rich uh rich representatives from one of those wealthy Democrat districts. And and Jared Moskowitz said, "I know Matt Gates. I think he'll be great." I mean, look, th this is what the American people voted for, right? I mean, you know, Trump was not he was not shy about what he wanted to do in this country and you know, in Matt Gates, he's not only going to get someone who's fierce Loyal but fiercely competent. Matt Gates knows exactly what to do with the Attorney General's office. He will, he will turn that into be most powerful Attorney General in American history. I uh, fiercely competent. That was Jared Moskowitz. He's a Democrat. Now he's not in the Senate, so he's not going to vote to confirm Matt Gates. But he's a Democrat. I'm sure that he has higher goals and aspirations than being a representative for the rest of his life. He might want to be senator one day or some other power position. And he's coming out saying, I know Matt Gates. I've known Matt Gates for year, years. He is highly loyal to Donald Trump, but he is also competent to do the job. I mean, look, th this is what the American people voted for, right? I mean, you know, Trump was not he was not shy about what he wanted to do in this country. And, you know, in Matt Gates, he's not only going to get someone who's fierce, loyal, but fiercely competent. Matt Gates Fiercely knows loyal and fiercely competent. He's going to turn the attorney general's office into the most powerful attorney general's office in history. And not only that, not only that, but there, wait, but wait, there's more. <laughs> because Jared Moskowitz says this is what the American people voted for. Gosh darn right it is. He's Jared Moskowitz. Get, uh, Jared Moskowitz gets it. He gets it. He understands that this is what America voted for. They put Donald Trump in office by a mandate. Electoral college victory, the likes of which a Republican hasn't seen for decades. Popular vote victory, the likes of which a Republican hasn't seen for decades. Uh, um, a mandate in the Senate with three, count them, three seats over the majority needed to take control and a majority confirmed in the House of Representatives. This is a mandate from the, this is what America voted for. Donald Trump is giving it to them. And the Democrats are just, they can't believe it. They're so apoplectic. They're so perplexed. They're so annoyed that Donald Trump is doing the will of the American people. This is, a, we wanted a Matt Gates as attorney general. We didn't want a Merrick Garland. We wanted a Matt Gates, And now we're going to get it. And Tommy Tuberville from Alabama, by the way, I never thought Tommy Tuberville from Alabama and Jared Moskowitz, the Democrat from uh, Boca Raton, would be on the same page about anything. But they're on the same page about Matt Gates. Matt Gates get the votes in the Senate. I don't know. You're finding all the swamp creatures coming out right now. Everybody's got the, an opinion up here. But at the end of the day, President Trump was elected by an enormous vote. And he deserves a team around him that he wants. It's not us to determine that. We've got 53 votes in the Senate. We can confirm with 51. I've already seen where a couple of them says, I'm not voting for him. Wait a minute. You are not the United States of America. You have one vote in the U.S. Senate. You did not get an elected president. Vote with President Trump. This is the last chance we're going to have of saving this country. And if you want to get in the way, fine. But we're going to try to get you out of the Senate, too, if you try to do that. Oh, look at that. Tommy Tuberville laying out the law. He's like, look, Donald Trump got basically exactly what Jared Moskowitz said. This is what the people wanted. They wanted Donald Trump. They want Donald Trump's team. Matt Gates is one of Donald Trump's teammates. If you don't put him on the team, we are going to take you out. You will. We Fine. You can vote against Matt Gates. You can make this. We can do it the easy way or we can do it the hard way. But if we do it the hard way, you will be attacked and we will find somebody to take your job in the Senate. And that goes for you, Lindsey Graham in South Carolina. And that goes for you, Susan Collins in Maine. And that goes for you, Joni Ernst in Iowa. And that goes for you, the guy from Louisiana whose name escapes me, but who's always doing the opposite of what Donald Trump wants. What the hell is that guy's name? Not John Kennedy, the other one. That'll come to me. But anyway, that's, that's, there's already Republicans out there who are like, oh, man, I don't know if I can vote. I don't know if I can vote for Matt Gates for attorney general. Oh, guess what? Then we don't think we can vote for you for Senate anymore. Axios put it this way. Trump dares Senate Republicans with Gates nomination. I dare you. I, I double, do I triple dog dare you. 
Come on, Senate Republicans, stick your tongue to that flagpole and see if it freezes. Trump dares Senate Republicans with Gates' nomination. The nomination of MAGA fire breather Representative Matt Gates for Attorney General has put soon-to-be Majority Leader John Thune on the hot seat. Why it matters, President-elect Donald Trump is daring Senate Republicans to defy him. Days after Thune agreed to consider recess appointments to speed up confirmations. Remember, that was a big point, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, this was the biggest day of Thune's career and was supposed to be a celebratory afternoon for the winning leaders. Instead, Trump handed Thune a conference splitter. It's a fairly accurate assessment, by the way, of what happened. Think about this. You're John Thune. You've been waiting for old turtle-faced Mitch McConnell I'm going to retire and step down now. I'm going to hand over the reins to somebody else. You've been waiting for that guy to get out of the way so that you could be Senate Majority Leader for years. Finally, you get your chance, and all of a sudden, oh, here comes here comes MAGA conservative and Florida natives Rick Scott to try to thwart your plan, so you got to beat him back. You finally do. John Cornyn thinks he's going to be the heir apparent. No, you got to beat him back, too. Finally, you come out, and you get to be, and you're like, boom, I'm Senate Majority Leader. And now all of a sudden, Donald Trump, within hours, says, okay, Senate Majority Leader, congratulations. I want Matt Gates, the most, I would, say, I would just say the most isolating man in Hollywood. You want to talk about somebody who can divide the, the Congress. It's Matt Gates. I want him to be my attorney general. Go make it happen. And when John Thune was asked about it, here's what he said. Uh, as you know, the Senate has an advise and consent role under the Constitution, so we will do everything we can to process his noms quickly, uh, get them installed in their position so they can begin to implement his agenda. Yeah, advise and consent. Advise and consent. And that's what they call the, uh, the um, nomination or the uh, approval process, basically. They've got to go in there. They've got to confirm these people. They've got to advise the president. Look, we don't think this is the right person. And then they've got to consent to him doing the job. It's one of the checks and balances in the Constitution. But you may remember that Donald Trump told every single leader via X, he said, look, I don't care which one of you leads the Senate, but I want recess appointments. And Mitch McConnell never recessed the Senate, which meant there were no recess appointments for two years. And a lot of judges and a lot of other positions got held up because Mitch McConnell had the power over President Trump to do that. So Donald Trump, he's serious. He's serious about all this. He, this has been his plan all along. He wanted a Senate majority uh, and he wanted a Senate majority leader who was going to give him recess appointments so that he could nominate Matt Gates and so that he and Matt Gates could get his nomination through. In fact, you may remember, let me see if I have it. I don't think I pulled it here. You may remember there was a moment when Donald Trump was at a rally. I want to say it may have been the Madison Square Garden rally. Was it the Madison Square Garden rally? It may have been, it may have been the Madison Square Garden rally. If it wasn't, it was one of the several... 100,000 other rallies that Donald Trump had over the past uh, little while. And he mentioned something about a surprise. There was a surprise. Donald Trump and Matt Gates had a surprise for the people. I think we figured out what that surprise was. We got to get the senators elected because we can take the Senate pretty easily. And I think with our little secret, we're going to do really well with the House, right? Our little secret is having a big impact. He and I have a secret. We'll tell you what it is when the race is over. Mm. He and I have a secret. The secret is that we're going to win the Senate. We're going to make sure that we get recess appointments. We're going to make him attorney general. We're going to get that passed through. And then we're going to put him into the DOJ to root out all of the evil and corruption and weaponization of the government. But it's our little secret. Now, I think the secret's out. I think the cat's out of the bag. I think we know exactly what Matt Gates and Donald Trump were planning the entire time. And it seems to be working according to plan. 